Hey, thank you for joining me. Um, I've been doing all the Spider-Mans by McFarlane that I have, um, but I never had a complete run. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, I've talked about how I kind of, for somehow, I'd seen McFarlane's artwork when I was younger, um, and it's it's kind of funny. It's weird for me to say that I, I saw it and I liked it, but I didn't pay attention to how good it was or all the strength that McFarlane had. I was so hyper-focused on Jim Lee and then to a lesser extent Liefeld and Silvestri in terms of the art that interested me in comics. It wasn't until the storyline later on where Ghost Rider showed up and my older brother, who was collecting these books, because we were both collecting books separately, um... And uh, he was getting the Spider-Man by McFarlane. He says, Can, uh, can't you wait? Like, Wolverine's going to guest star in this book. And I was like, why do I care? He's like, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, drawn by this artist. And my older brother is the guy who doesn't know how to do no goddamn thing artistically. But he could see how good it was. And so he handed over, because I was reading these books, but he was collecting them, not me. So I'd read them and kind of like, okay, that was cool. And then moved on and went back and stared endlessly at the X-Men books by Jim Lee that I was reading. But it wasn't until my brother kind of said, hey, you like to draw, dummy. Maybe you should pay attention to this guy. So I started going back and just paying attention. And I was like, oh, wait, how did I not notice all this crazy detail and line work and dramatic angles? Like, it's it's really dumb. Even I don't understand it. How I just missed it until someone else said, pay attention. And then once I did on their advice, boy, did it stand out. But I, so all that is to say, I never collected these first ones. My first one was like issue, the third issue of the Wolverine crossover. And that's the first comic I had started like really collecting on my own. But um, yeah, my older brother said, check out this artist. So anyway, I'm trying to piece together the entire run, especially the Torment opening, opening uh, storyline. I don't have issue one. I think I've got two. I think I don't have three. Now I've got four. One of these days when I get all five of them, I'll probably just do like a review of them all. It's just kind of what I think about the story. But in this one, we're just here to talk about the artwork. And another thing that's kind of funny is because I remember, you know, I read this back in the day. My brother was collecting them. And whenever we would get comics that the other one didn't have, because again, my brother had his own money. He bought his own books. And same thing for me. I'd be like, what'd you get? Okay, so I'd read this Spider-Man storyline and I was, I was kind of into it. But, um... You'd think that the fucking off-the-wall weird coloring would have stood out to me, and it did not. For whatever reason, as a kid, it did not jump out to me in any way that stuck out in my mind. Now, maybe when I saw it, maybe it would have been like, this is weird, but I just kind of moved on and never gave it another thought. And I've subsequently learned that, one, the, the how and what, what the coloring, why it's weird, but so many other people just saw it and was like, what the hell happened? It's like this in that um, issue of X-Force number four, I think it is, where the coloring is all fucked up. And they talked about it on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel how they brought over a colorist and he was using a color guide, but he thought that the color guide that he was using at Marvel was the same color guide that he was using elsewhere, but they didn't all line up. They were like off by one or two notches. So what the color guide number that he put in to color this here was not the one he thought it was. So everything was just off a little bit. If I'm if it sounds weird the way I'm explaining it, go look it up on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Guys channel. They talked about that issue and this one. There's like the two weirdest coloring jobs to come out of Marvel in a long time. And not in a good way, but in a weird way. So, as I understand it, the X-Force one was due to a mistake. Um, you might be someone who thinks that giving Todd McFarlane coloring duties is a mistake. Um, and it probably is. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at this thing. I just, I don't remember seeing this as a kid and going, what the fuck? In like a, what am I seeing? I just remember like, that's a pretty big awesome page so torment part four artist writer colors todd mcfarlane so visually mcfarlane's doing everything except the lettering i want to say there was an issue where he did the lettering i'm not sure somebody can correct me on that um so having subsequently gone through this just now um it's i feel like this psychedelic off the wall overdone nightmare color job 
it sucks, but it makes it so interesting. If I feel like if I I can't remember if Spider Man is just like he's being mentally manipulated, but if like this is a character that was on drugs, this coloring scheme through this whole book would be perfect as if it's like some drug induced hallucinogen that he's suffering through and he's seeing this wild, insane color imagery. That in that kind of sense, I think this coloring would work. But whatever McFarlane was doing with his color choices, I think it just screams out a guy who doesn't know how to color. But he wanted to try. And I give him full credit for that. He like, one issue, I'm like, I'm going to color. I want to pencil it, ink it, write it, and color it. And he gave it his all. But I don't know how coloring is done, how you cut in the highlights on like on lizard here and all these random alternate colors that go on through all these places. I don't know how you do it, but what a tedious nightmare it seems like. I kind of think that the coloring kind of works on Craven here, this shot with this giant hole in his head because he's like a walking corpse. So it's almost like that's not a human skin tone. So I thought it kind of worked there. So just the whole thing. I I do think in terms of the complementing the black and white artwork to the best possible degree, this coloring does kind of ruin it. It makes his artwork kind of hard to read in places. But by the same token, like I was saying, because it's so weird, it's such an interesting kind of like moment in time, this artifact of this weird coloring that happened that's just so psychedelic. Uh, I always dig it when McFarlane would do spider webbing as the panel borders. That's kind of awesome. But yeah, poor Peter Parker. He's been manipulated. Again, I can't remember if he's drugged or something. But the way that McFarlane draws with like the bubbles on his head and then the little flashy kind of things coming off. So maybe in that sense, I wonder if that's part of it. You know, did McFarlane go, he is out of his mind and so he's seeing weird things. But the coloring is the same ridiculous shit throughout the entire book as opposed to we should only see this weird funky coloring when it's through Peter's perspective. Not when there's a flashback of something or it we're off with Mary Jane. The coloring shouldn't be weird and wacky. It should be more standardized and then go back to the weird, wacky coloring to emphasize the the mental manipulation that he's going on and then that we're seeing through his vantage point, if that makes sense. Um, and this was an, it, I like the story point because I was just aware of Craven the Hunter and I had never read the story, but my understanding was that this guy basically beat Spider-Man and buried him alive and he pulled himself out. So I was like, I don't know who this Craven guy is. I've never read about him, but just the, like the history of what had happened that I don't know about made him really ominous. So just having him pop up as like a dead corpse, um, really creepy. And then McFarlane draws a great like head wound with the hole blown through his head there. It almost kind of looks like the way the T-1000 got that headshot uh, was at the end of Terminator 2. And then uh, close that hole up. It kind of looks like that. But then you got the voodoo chick. I can't remember what her name was. I think she's, uh, they explain in this book, I think that she's like related to him. like Or not related, but like a an acquaintance, like a former lover or something like that. And so she's here to avenge Craven by tormenting Spider-Man. So again, all these layouts, the drawings, it's very McFarlane. It's very detailed. It's very wild. And the coloring is psychotic, makes it hard to read in some places. I uh, just got done filming another video. And if these go up in the way I think they will, it would be the video just previous to this one. But I got to point it out. I did this on the last one. For Even for as bad as this crappy coloring is, this art, the storytelling, the loving craft going into drawing this by hand is a thousand times better than this absolute pile of garbage right here where I was going through this soulless, brainless, heartless, dead, computer-generated comic, Donna Matrix. This is just unbelievably horrible. And even McFarlane, in his questionable era, in terms of this issue, it's still so much better. 
Mary Jane, she knows that Peter's not home, so she's kind of nervous. So to distract herself, so she's going to go out on a town. Back with the, uh, you know, Spider-Man's caught the lizard and what's her name, you know, captured him. And so they're trying to torment him. Still got the little circles indicating the, the like he's out of his mind. So again, the, the psychotic coloring would make sense. Um, this close up of Spider-Man's face, I always liked. And then I always liked this part right here when Spider-Man's looking over to the lizard. He's like, hey, Doc, come on, buddy, fight this thing. You don't need her. Please help. He's like trying to reach the good human that is inside Kurt Connors here. And the lizard smiles and the text says, is that a smile? Does he understand? But then the lizard comes leaping at Spider-Man to kill him. But then Voodoo Girl tells him to stop. And now another thing from my history of Spider-Man, I was aware of the lizard as a character, but at this point I had never read a comic with the lizard in it. So this is my introduction to reading a story with the lizard. And McFarlane made him a violent, dangerous, bloodthirsty, killing animal. And so that's what I think of the lizard as. I don't think he was anything even remotely close to that in previous stuff. I've seen some other stuff as, as the years have gone on. And it's just safe, cutesy Marvel shit, it seems like, the stuff that I've seen. So I appreciate that McFarlane's like, I'm going to take this lizard creature and turn him into a horrific threat. I like that. Splatterhouse ad. What a great game that was. Um, these wild, skinny, long panels, which I am no good at. I need to practice them, but I'm no good at it. Mary Jane's out on the town dancing with some other dude. Probably going to take him home and hook up with him. Just kidding. Peter and Mary Jane love each other. Um, the torment keeps going on. In a way, it kind of feels like this could be repetitive and kind of stupid. But... Um, I remember, you know, I don't remember the comic being like hard to get through at the time. This coloring, why is this cut out of white here? And then these beads in her hair. It's like a rainbow arrangement of blues and yellows and reds and all kinds of like multitudes of colors. It's like the color palette changes from panel to panel. It just doesn't make any sense. I do like this spread. Like telling the history of this voodoo chick and with Craven almost all silhouettes the color palette is almost a um, monotone monochromatic kind of thing this is where this stuff works the best <clears throat> um and again all the silhouette imagery it's hard to make something work like that um i am trying my best to make sense of this panel right here oh okay i see it finally jesus christ that's her face right there and her hair I thought, eh, I, I couldn't read that at all. Now I see it. But that silhouette of her there, the bats and the moon in the background, drinking from the cup, um, slaughtering an animal. I always thought this shot of Craven, the silhouette with like his head in silhouette, but then the big poofy like lion's mane around him. Really cool. I thought these spears are really full of life and energy. Like McFarlane can draw. This shit all looks really cool. This is the best spread in the book, I think. It's the one where everything works together the most. But after all this torment, uh, Spider-Man finally has enough here. I think on the next page, he's going to break free. Pretty cool big splash page, lizard in shadows there, Spider-Man up front, psychotic, crazy coloring. I like Spider-Man there, snapping his bonds and going to get away. He's pissed. Lizard jumps at him, so Spider-Man boots him and sends him flying into the garbage. Um, and then this shot of like the close up of her face and then her hand coming forward, that's pretty dynamic. But then something's dripping in the background, something, um, the ruptured gas lines, and then it touches fire. And then this pretty damn good explosion. The coloring is just so weird. So, so weird. But, um, it works it, somehow, some way. Like I said, I know it's, it's so funny now looking at it. This is just, if I were to read this fresh today, I'd be like, what the hell is going on? But as a kid, whenever this came out, I was 13 or 14, didn't even register with me. Not one bit. So, yeah, I'm not talking too much about the story, but more of just that crazy thing where McFarlane was trying to do something different. And... I, I full credit to him for trying. 
Um, I like McFarlane. I know he's controversial and some people hate him. Some people dig him. I'm into the guy. I like him. I like his attitude. I like his, uh, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. And um, his success, whether you like him or not, is undeniable. So I don't know. I like Todd McFarlane and he went for it. He pencils it, inks it, writes it. He's like, God damn it, bud, I want to color an issue of Spider-Man. And he got to. And uh, I don't think he ever colored again, so maybe he learned his lesson. Anyway, I guess that's it. Nothing else to add to it. But I'm still looking for issues one and three and five of the Torment series. And then I still need the first. I need the Ghost Rider issues. And then I need the first two of the Wolverine crossover. So I, I, I got to collect up this whole thing. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you next time.